Welcome to Chapter 5 of the Creating Lighting Fixture GDTF video series. At this point, your fixture has the basic physical, photometric, and spectral aspects of the light defined. But how is the light controlled? The DMX page of the builder enables you to define how your light's attributes are controlled by a console and will help describe how they should be visualized. As with the previous chapters, you can jump to specific subjects within this video using the display timestamps. You'll need a copy of the light's DMX charts for this step of creating your GDTF, either from the manufacturer's user manual or your internal documentation. You set up the DMX modes of your light in the DMX page of the builder. Map how each channel in the mode links to an attribute and the behavior of that attribute for a given DMX value within the channel. To the left of the page is the DMX modes pane. Each mode is a top level or parent object and the channels are children. The channels can be dragged and reordered as you require inside the parent object. The menu at the top right of the pane has some context commands such as duplicate DMX mode and sort DMX channels to help you make your workflow more efficient. The main window on the right displays information about the selected DMX mode or channel. When a mode is selected, you'll see an overview of it. The DMX footprint is at the top right followed by the DMX break offset field. The offset is used to help with console patching. If, for example, you are defining a fixture that uses an external dimmer, you can apply an offset here to account for the extra patch channels needed to control that dimmer. Below this are summary cards for each channel in the mode, giving a brief description of the channel's linked function. When a channel is selected, either from the DMX modes pane or from the mode overview, a detailed view of the channel and all the functions inside it will be displayed. At the top is the channel's name. This will in most cases be based on the attribute the channel controls. Next come the basic properties common to all channels. Channel resolution, for example, 8-bit or virtual, is used to define how many DMX channels are used to control the channel. Virtual is used when the attribute is not directly DMX controllable, such as the pan or tilt for conventional Fresnel. The coarse, fine, ultra and uber are used to address the DMX channels based on the resolution setting. The higher the resolution, the more of these fields are active. A DMX break is used when the fixture needs more than a single start address. This is most common when you are modeling an LED fixture that has individual pixel control. Use the overwrite break toggle to set whether the channel uses a user-defined DMX break or one defined by its geometry. If it's set to user, you can enter the break here. Geometry-defined DMX breaks have to be set up using the geometry tree to define how the LED pixels are laid out in relation to each other. This provides a really powerful way to describe complex DMX modes while keeping the size of the GUTF itself small. Link the channel to the fixture's geometry using the dropdown. The initial channel function displays the primary function of the channel. This is set when a new channel is created. Set up if and how the channel responds to a console's highlight feature. Typically, consoles leverage this to help users identify the active light when they are working with a group of fixtures. Some consoles use dimmer for this, others the color settings. If the channel acts as a master for another function, use the add relation button to set this up. Name the relationship, use the follower dropdown to set the related function, and mode defines how the related function is affected by the master channel setting. When multiply is used, the DMX value of the master is multiplied before being applied to the follower. Override applies the master's DMX value directly to the follower. A good example of how this can be used is when an RGB white fixture is controlled in RGB mode. To enable the white LED to be automatically turned on as part of color mixing and macros. This helps support accurate pre-visualization of the fixture. Relations display as children of the parent channel in the DMX modes pane. The preview section displays a visual representation of the functions in the channel. Each function displays in order from left to right, and as a parent object with the associated channel sets listed in order from left to right under it. Logical channels is where the function of the channel is defined. This section is collapsible. Each logical channel has its own tab. New logical channels can be added by clicking on the plus icon. The tabs are named based on the initial function of the channel. Attribute displays the initial function and clicking on the field enables changing the assigned function. 
set how or if the function will respond to a console master, its move in black behavior, and change types. You can also set whether the channel snaps or fades between sets. Each channel has a list of one or more related functions that are used to define how the light responds to a given DMX range inside the channel. For example, a fixture shutter typically allows a variety of behaviors such as open, closed, strobing, pulsing, and so on. Each function has its own card, where the basic properties of the function are defined. Its name should be based on how it is named in the DMX chart. Set the function by clicking in the attribute field and searching for the appropriate entry in the dialog. Define the channel function's DMX range and midpoint. All three of these fields use a link display option so you can display the DMX values in a variety of formats based on bit size or as a percentage. The physical fields define how the function relates to the real world and change depending on the function being described. For example, with zoom, they define the minimum and maximum zoom angle in degrees, but for a stroke function in flashes per second. Depending on the function, the card may also display the wheel dropdown. Additional properties are accessed through the button at the bottom of each card. If the channel acts as a master or control for another channel, for example, gogo rotations for a gogo wheel, the link is set up here. This will be covered later in the chapter in more detail. Mode masters can be added below the function cards and help define the link between master channels and the channels they control or affect. Each function has an associated channel set that defines what specific DMX values in the function's DMX range do. These should be named based on the fixture's DMX chart. The field values have to be within the range defined by the parent channel function. Some channel sets are used to help increase the precision of how an attribute behavior is described. For example, a strobe of attributes pulse option behavior. More information about this can be found in the GDTF spec in Annex F, Bracket Normative Subphysical Unit Precisions. Let's take a look at setting up the modes for our project fixture from the previous chapters. Always create the largest DMX mode for the fixture first. It's far faster to duplicate modes and delete channels than duplicating and then adding channels. First, add a new DMX mode, call it mode one, and give it the description advanced mode. This will be linked to the base geometry. Now to add the channels. They can be added in any order as you can sort them later to match the fixtures DMX chart. When each new channel is added, it has to be linked to part of the fixtures geometry and you have to search for the basic attribute that has to be defined. The combination of these is then used to name the channel. With the channels added to the mode, the channel functions and sets need to be configured. Since the fixture has both coarse and fine dimmer control, set the resolution to 16-bit. Coarse will be addressed to 1 and fine to 2. Leave the overwrite break off and the DMX break at 1. Since the dimmer should always respond to a console's highlight macro, tick this on and set it. In the logical channels, it will respond to the grandmaster with the rest left at the default values. Since this is a basic dimmer, there's only a single dimmer channel function card. It will use 0 to 255 in the DMX from and to fields, and default will be 0. The physical will be set from 0 to 1, where 1 represents maximum intensity. The channel set has only two entries, closed and open. Both will use the parent physical data. The demo was a fairly simple example, but a very good starting point. Next is the shutter channel, which offers a good example for a more complex attribute it's only a single channel, so the resolution will be 8-bit. And set the course to 3, since it's the next available channel after the dimmer attribute channels. Shutter function is already linked to the geometry. The highlight value is the first DMX value that the shutter will be open at, which is also the default DMX from the channel function. Like the dimmer, this function only has a small channel set, closed and open, and will use the basic values from the function card. Strobe, so hit the plus icon and type shutter into the search box. The list will filter to display all of the attributes that include shutter in their name. Shutter strobe defines a basic stroke function with n being the wildcard value, in this case 1, since there is only a single shutter channel. The DMX range needs to be defined again based on the values in the DMX fixtures chart. Since this is a strobe function, the physical range divides the speed of the strobe in flashes per second. 
After stroke, the GMX chart repeats the Shutter 1 function card. So use the right-click menu to copy the Shutter 1 card, and then again to paste it after the first strobe card. This copies the channel function card, including channel sets, which will then need to be updated by renaming the card and adjusting the DMX ranges appropriately. You repeat this process for all the functions inside the shutter channel, and again for the other channels in the mode. Once the largest mode is set up, you can use it as a starting point for the rest of the fixtures modes. By using the duplication command, in the DMX menu. Once the new smaller mode is created, rename it, delete any channels that are not part of the mode. If the channel order changes, drag and drop the channels into the correct order, and then use set addresses by order command to readdress the channels appropriately. Before finishing this chapter, there are a couple of special cases that need to be looked at in more detail. The first is virtual channels. These are used to allow the control of fixture attributes that are not DMX controlled, such as the pan and tilt on a conventional fixture. To take a closer look at this, let's use the conventional template in the builder. Like regular fixtures, it has a DMX mode with channels, but instead of all the channels having a numbered address inside the mode, the virtual channels have a V to show they're not DMX controlled. Any channel can be defined as virtual in the channel's resolution field, and any related channel function cards are set up as normal, though there won't be any channel sets. Once set up, virtual channels can be used in previs to control the related attribute. Second is dependencies or masters. This is where one channel's setting or value affects the behavior of another channel. Gogo rotation is a very good example of this as the setting in the rotation channel defines how the Google rotates. Let's jump into one of the Roby spot fixtures to take a look at how this is set up. The Gobo channel is set up as normal, but the Gobo position channel works slightly differently from a regular channel. The logical channel consists of mode master containers, which then have the channel functions inside of them. The first channel function is set up as normal until the basic fields are filled in. Then the additional properties have to be used to define the mode master. The master can be defined by either DMX channel for standard masters or by channel function when multiple cascading dependencies need to be defined. The mode master dropdown links the master channel to the channel it helps control. And the mode from two fields define the channel function DMX range of the mode master at which the channel function will be used. Additional mode masters are added by hitting the Add Mode Master Container button. The last special case is split channels, where multiple attributes are controlled from a single DMX channel. For example, shutter and dimmer. Split channels use separate logical channels for each attribute. To add a second logical channel, hit the plus icon beside the first logical channels tab. The key thing when setting up split channels is to make sure that there are no feature channel function cards added to each to define the DMX range that is controlled by the other function. So for example, if the dimmer is active from 0 through 139 on the DMX range, then the dimmer logical channel will have a dimmer function card for 0 through 139 and a no function card from 140 through 255. The shutter will then be the opposite, with a no function card set for 0 through 139, and the shutter function card starts at 140. Now that the fixtures DMX modes are set up, the final steps are defining any control macros and checking the GDTF for errors. Chapter 6 in the series will look at how macros are set up and how to use the summary to help find any problems or issues with the fixture.